Hi everybody, this is Caitlin Albright, the Eversons Education Coordinator, and today I'm joined by our registrar, Karen Convertino. Hi, Karen. Hi, Caitlin. Thanks so much for being here today. So I think a lot of people, um, they don't really know much about what a registrar does in a museum. So I'm really excited to chat with you and hear a little bit more about your role at the Everson. Uh, but why don't we get started by having you tell us a little bit about your background. Um, well, I, you know, grew up in Syracuse and you know, went to Henniger High School. And, uh, and then I went away to college at uh, SUNY Purchase or Purchase College down in downstate New York. and. Um, you know, stayed down there for a bunch of years after that, and yeah. That's great. So can you tell us a little bit more about your education experience at Purchase College? What was that like for you? Is that kind of where your interest in art and the museum world was sparked? Um, well, it definitely started in high school. I think my high school art teachers were a huge part of my high school life and sort of put me on a path to always looking for artwork, you know, wherever I went. and. Um, but when I got to purchase, you know, a work study job at the Newberger Museum was, um, was, was the, the job I got when I got to school. And it really kind of opened my eyes to the idea that, um, that of all the different jobs that are available in museums. And, and I think even growing up, you know, going to the Everson and going to the Erie Canal Museum and all these different places, it never dawned on me that there were actually people that work in these places. You know, the artwork doesn't magically appear. It doesn't, you know, so that kind of stuff. And so it kind of made me realize like, oh, you know, art history is like a major that I could have. And, you know, working in a museum, there's, you know, you don't just have to be a curator or an artist. There's, you know, there's all these different things that, you know, can take place. So I had some really amazing experiences uh, doing that. That's great. And that's actually something I've heard from a lot of other uh, museum employees in all different types of departments, too. And that was my experience as well. I never in a million years thought that I would be someone who could work at a museum because I don't have a background in art history. And people kind of have a more limited scope of what it is that you can do in a museum. So um, what exactly were you able to do at the Newberger Museum during your time there that um, just introduced you more to the different types of roles you could take on in a museum? Um, well, I started out, I was, you know, my, my job was, I think the title was public gallery assistant or something like that. And so I worked with um, the museum manager and the installation crew and they had a rule that, you know, students, you know, we were all trained, but uh, we couldn't touch any artwork until we had worked there for a full year. So it was like three semesters basically before, you know, they would let you actually touch anything. Um, but my summer semester, like after my freshman year in college, I came home to Syracuse and I interned at the Everson for a summer where I um, got to um, uh, work on a, a big accession of some art pottery that had come in, a big group of, of gifts that came in, as well as the Mary Frank exhibition. So I, I gained some new experience in handling art uh, at the Everson. So then when I went back, I got a lot, uh, you know, I, I got to participate a little more at the Newberger, which was really cool, you know, but I painted a lot of walls and swept a lot of floors. Um, but I did, I, I'll never forget like the first, the first probably couple of days that I worked there, um, they had me go into New York City with another staff member uh, who was returning artwork that had been borrowed from an exhibition. And, not even realizing, you know, I was, you know, whatever, where I was 18 years old or whatever, I was never realizing what was happening. Um, we were returning video monitors and all this stuff to Namjoon Pike and at his, you know, so while I didn't get to meet him, I got to see like his storage basement in his building, you know, in New York. And so there's all these like things that, I, you know, I kind of realized that these are all experiences that I would never would have had otherwise, you know, so it was always really great. That's a really interesting experience, especially as an intern, too. That's got to be kind of mind-blowing when you realize the full scope of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about what exactly is a registrar in a museum? It's kind of a mysterious title, so maybe you can shed some light on that for us. Yeah. Um, well, as you know, at the, some museums, you know, museums are set up a little bit differently. You know, at the, you know, the, the Everson, you know, the registrar, you know, People argue about the title, whether it's registrar or collections manager. 
um, and what roles they, they take on. Um, you know, we have a small staff at the Everson, so we sort of encompass a lot of, a lot of roles. Um, but in general, a librarian is, or a, a registrar is sort of like a librarian for artwork almost, you know, in the collection, you know, I keep track of, um, we have about 11,000 objects in the collection um, and those objects um, really have a really broad span of time that it covers and, uh, you know, a variety of mediums. And so part of my job, not only keeping track of things like where they are and, and how they're moved throughout the building, but also, um, you know, it's looking at all those different materials and what is the best way to store them and handle them, you know, because uh, preserving, you know, film and video is very, very different than trying to preserve and store ceramics and things like that versus, you know, photographs and works on paper and things like that. Everything has different needs. And so I try really hard to make sure that um, everything we have, we're storing to the best, uh, uh, in the best environment that we can we can give it to make it last as long. A big and important job where you have to really have a, a vast range of knowledge to be able to, <laughs> to handle all of those responsibilities. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what what's your favorite part of your job and what's one aspect that you find to be the most challenging? Um, definitely my favorite part is working with the objects for sure you know um, you know from the you know, my introduction into you know working in the art world was really being an art handler, and um, it's like perpetual problem solving. You know everything. You know before you pick up an object, you know you have to assess what it needs. Like, does it have any weaknesses? Is it dangerous for you to pick it up? Is it like all these like things you have to solve before you even you know approach it? And it can also be really inspiring too. You know, you can't spend like three days unpacking you know, 30 Vanessa German crates or, you know, work side by side with an artist like Sheila Pepe, you know, on a, on a fiber installation and not come out of it, you know, having a better understanding of how artists work, how mm -hmm. to solve problems, you know, even if it's applying it to your own work, uh, uh, you know, that if, you, if you're crafty on your own or make things on your own, like how to solve those problems or how do I put these two parts together and make it still look the way I want it to look and things like that. And so working with, with artwork that way, I think helps solve a lot of those problems, answer questions, get you to you know, look at things from different perspectives. That's really interesting. A lot of critical thinking involved in that. <laughs> so what's one aspect that you find to be the, the most challenging about your job? Well, I think for me anyway, it's, uh, you know, managing all the different logistics of exhibitions, you know, some exhibitions are more complicated than others, um, you know, but, you know, trying to make sure that curators have everything that they want in, in a show that's within a budget, mm -hmm. and then, you know, helping artists achieve their vision uh, in an installation that represents what they want to say, you know, also within a very specific budget, you know. Um, and making sure our small crew has everything that they need uh, in order to accomplish the installation, you know, safely and on time. So those are, you know, so there's a lot of, there's a lot of layers to the exhibitions. Yes, definitely. Um, now you are an artist yourself too. You have your own jewelry business outside of the Everson. Can you tell us a little bit more about what it is that you do in your studio and how you find time to balance your creative work with your uh, nine to five job? <laughs> well, I do. I love it. You know, I know balance. Yeah. Um, well, I will say my first mistake when we started working from home was I set up my office in my little studio space, which was a really big mistake because now I can't really separate the two very well at all, um, and I haven't been very creative since uh, we've been home. So, um, but I, I took an enameling class at the Everson a couple years ago, and I just kind of fell in love with. Um, almost like the instant gratification of it, you know, with ceramics, you know, you have to let it dry and you fire it once and then you glaze it and then you fire it. Like there's all this, you know, it takes weeks for like ceramics to happen, but enameling, um, you can get that, you know, finished satisfaction much more quickly and um, the way the glass reacts and, and, and all of that is just really cool. So that was like, you know, uh, the Everson provided this, you know, experience that just sort of, you know, let me sort of go off onto my own. And, you know, eventually I got my own kiln and, 
uh, stuff like that. So, um, you know, I'm having a lot of fun. I just started making these things and people liked them. And so I started doing a few craft fairs here and there and I'll do a few every year. And, and it's, uh, it's just really a fun way for me to, um, you know, uh, just, you know, get out some extra creative energy and, and play around and stuff. So. That's awesome. And are your earrings that you're wearing right now? Oh, or is this your own? Gift? Yes, these are mine. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. I also have a pair of your earrings too. Oh, great. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Karen, for speaking with us today. It's really great to be able to sit down with you and hear about your role at the Everson and what you are up to creatively outside of the museum as well. So we really appreciate having you on today. Awesome. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you.